In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can host your 3.js web application on GitHub Pages. Now, GitHub Pages is a very popular choice for hosting for two reasons. First of all, it's free, and second of all, the hosting is co-located right with your source code, so it's really easy to maintain everything all in one place. Now, I have a little 3D web app that I made here. This is a procedural planet generator. And I'm pretty happy with where it's at, and now I'm ready to share it with family and friends. Now, before we dive into how to set up GitHub pages and all of that, we need to talk about the two different ways that you can deploy 3.js with your application. So let's jump over to the 3.js docs, and I'm under the installation section here. And if we scroll down, we can see there's two options. The first option is installing with NPM and a build tool. A build tool they recend is Vite. Um, that's the build tool that I'm going to be using, but really you can use any build tool. It doesn't really have much to do with the build tool itself. So that's the option I'll be showing you first, since that's the most popular and the most common. Now if we scroll down, we can see the second option is importing from a CDN. So if you're doing a really simple web app and you don't want to deal with a build system, you can import the 3GS dependencies this way in the header of your HTML file. And that's going to require a slightly different way of deployment to GitHub pages. So I'll talk about that in the later half of this video. So right now I'm looking at the GitHub repo for my project, 3GS Procedural Planets. So let's go ahead and go to the Settings tab here. And then on the left-hand side in the sidebar, under Code and Automation, go down to Pages. So it says here GitHub Pages is designed to host your personal organization or project pages from a GitHub repo. Perfect, that's what we want. And there are two ways of basically deploying your application. You can use GitHub Actions or you can deploy from a branch. Now we're gonna be using GitHub Actions for deploying our built code, our code built using Vite. And they have some suggested workflows here. So these workflows are like little scripts that get triggered every time you commit your code. So if I push my changes up to my main branch, it's gonna trigger this workflow, and then it's gonna build my code and then deploy it to GitHub Pages. So that's called continuous deployment. That's a really great soft engineering principle, um, but we won't get into that any deeper. I'm going to actually start with this static HTML workflow, and I'm gonna configure it from here. So I'll hit that configure button, and now it pulls up the code that we're gonna to commit to our GitHub repo. You can see it's going to add this code under the .github workflows folder. This file itself is called static.yaml. Um, if you're not familiar with YAML, it's just basically a scripting language. It's sort of tab-based like Python, but we don't need to know a whole lot about YAML. I'll just talk through the important parts and what you need to modify. So very quickly going through the script, this is the trigger section here. So when we push our changes to the branches listed here, only branch we have is main. You could add other branches if you want here. If we push our changes to main, it's going to dispatch a worker. It's gonna run this workflow. We do some basic permission set up here and some concurrency settings. Don't need to worry about these. And then here's the actual job that's gonna get run. This is our deploy job. Now, what's happening in here? You can see there's a section called steps and there's one, two, three, four steps. The first is we check out our code. The second is we do a little setup here behind the scenes with GitHub Pages. And then we upload our build artifact. Now, right now, it's just uploading the entire repository, which is not what we want. So we're gonna to need to change that. Then once we upload that artifact, then we do the final deployment to GitHub Pages. So we're gonna to need to make some minor modifications to the script, but before we do that, let's go to our actual source code in VS Code here. So I have my package.json pulled up, and let's look at the scripts that I have here, my NPM scripts. So I have my dev script, of course, which runs the application locally. Um, I have a build script here, which builds the application, of course, and then the preview. Now I wanna run my build script. Let's get a new terminal here, and I'll do npm run build. So you can see that it generated this folder at the root level here called dist. That's our code distribution. And let's open that up and see what's inside. So we have our index.html file. 
And we have some assets here. So this is the pictures for the star field, the sky box. My cloud image here, my cloud texture, and then some CSS and some minified JavaScript. So I want to upload this folder to GitHub pages instead of this, you know, entire repository here. I don't want all this. I just want what's inside of dist. Now, if you look in the sidebar here, you can see that my dist folder is grayed out and that's because it's not included in source control. And there's two main reasons for that. First of all, it's just going to take up extra space. You know, why commit that to your repository and have to pull that down when you can just build it on demand. And the second is you don't really want your built code to be out of date with the source code. Anytime that you're deploying your application, you want to make sure you're rebuilding from the latest source. By just doing that on demand, you're not having to worry about stale builds getting into your deployment. So I recommend including dist or, you know, out or whatever you call this folder in your git ignore and just building your application on demand. Let's go inside of our script again and let's update this to be dist. So we're going to need to add three additional steps to our YAML script here. And those three steps are going to be setting up node so that we can run our npm commands. Then we're going to have to do npm install to install all of our dependencies. And then we'll actually do the, the build npm run build and that will generate our build artifacts, which we can then upload. Right after we check out our code, let's add a new step. That'll call that setup node. And this is gonna use a built-in GitHub action. And that's gonna be setup node. And as of now, the most current version is v4. And then we want to install dependencies. So we're gonna run npm install. And then finally, we want to add our build here. So build app, and this is going to run npm run build. Now you can tweak these a little bit. Um, I know for setting up node, you can pick what your version of node that you want to run. Um, we're just going to go with the default, but this is now the flow here. We check out the code, set up node, install the dependencies, build the app, and then we go through all the GitHub pages set up and the uploading of the artifact and then deployment. So I think we're ready to commit this. So let's go up here and do commit changes. And we're just gonna commit this right to the main branch. And now if we go to the actions tab here, we can see that this workflow is now running. So I can go in here, I can click on this and I can click on the deploy job here. And I can see all the different steps that are running. Set up node, it's installed the dependencies, it built the app. So it's going quite fast here. Um, set up pages, uploaded the artifact. So it looks like all this is happening successfully. And now if we go into settings, and then let's go down to GitHub pages, and we can see there's now a new box here and that says our site is live at this address here. Now let's go visit this and see what happens. And I'm getting a white screen here, which indicates that something is wrong. We can see we're getting a whole bunch of issues with um, 404s. So it's not finding our assets. If I go to the network tab, I'll do a reload here. It can't find the JavaScript. It can't find the CSS. Um, so that looks like a big problem. There's one more thing that we need to do here, and that is our application actually has an additional part in the URL here. So we need to tell Vite that when we're building for GitHub pages in a production environment, that we need to add this to our base URL. So let's go back to our source code, and I'm going to go into Vite config here. So I, I just have a blank configuration set up here and I just need to add one line. So I need to modify the base URL and that's called base. If I'm running this in a production environment and I can check that by doing process.env.node.env, if that's equal to production, then I want to append this part of the URL. And if you go to your GitHub repo, if 
I just go and look at my code here. It's this part of the URL right here. Um, so there's my username, and then it's the name of the repository itself. Now it's very important you do forward slash, then the name of the repository, and then another forward slash. I'm gonna close out that string. So if we're not running in a production environment, we're just running locally, then I'm gonna just leave that base URL as an empty string. Now we'll double check that everything is working locally. I'm gonna do npm run dev. And our application is still working there, so that looks good. So let's kill this process, and I'm gonna push these changes up. Now remember that our script is automatically triggered when we push to our main branch. So we'll see that it automatically kicked off a new run of our workflow. So let's just wait a little bit for this to complete. So that's all done there. And now I'm going to go back to my URL right here. And this is my GitHub pages hosted project. So if I open the network tab really quick here, so if I click on our JavaScript file, here's the kind of root URL, here's our base URL, and then Here's the actual path to the asset. Now, if your 3JS project is not using a build system, you're just importing 3JS through a CDN, here's the approach you take to deploy that to GitHub Pages. In this project, I just have everything dumped in the root directory, my JavaScript file, my CSS file, an x.html file, and all of my images that I'm um, pulling into my app. If you quickly look in my index.html file, you can see in the head I am importing my 3JS dependencies. And then in my main file, I'm importing those in as a module. And Rust is just kind of business as usual. So I do have a package.json file in this, um, in this project. And that's just so I can run a local development server and test my code out. So this is a very simple project that I worked on some time ago where I just wanted to attach photos to locations on the earth. So pretty simple. Now, how do we deploy this to GitHub pages? I'm going to go to my repository. So in this case, it's photo earth 3JS. And once again, we go into settings and go to the GitHub pages section. Now you could use a GitHub action here and that's probably the recommended way of going, um, but you could also just deploy it directly from a branch. So I could do the main branch here, and then I just want to deploy everything in the root directory. Now this should automatically kick off a GitHub action when you save it, and that'll just deploy everything to GitHub pages. Um, since I've already done this, I did a little testing before recording here. Um, for some reason, it's not letting me save here. Let me, let me try changing the directory temporarily. And changing back to root. And then let's go check out actions. So you can see it's all using GitHub actions behind the scenes anyways, so it's best to just use those to begin with. Um, but this will work as well if you just want to get something deployed quick. Let's refresh and see if this is finished yet. Um, looks like it's nearly done. All right, so if I click on this link, it's going to open up my application. And we can see that I'm now on github.io and I have my application running. Now, if I go back into settings and go to pages and select GitHub Actions, let's say I'm just gonna unpublish my site altogether here. And I'm gonna pick that static HTML template again. And this time I don't need to do anything additional here. I can use this template directly and I can upload everything in the root directory and I don't have to screw around with Node or anything. So I'll leave this just as it is and commit those changes. So if we go back to our actions, we can see that our static.yaml file, that workflow is now running. So let's wait a bit for that to run. So our workflow is finished running. So I should be able to go back to this URL now and do a refresh. And it looks like everything is still running as expected. So two different alternatives if you're importing 3JS from a CDN. You can use the GitHub Actions or you can use the classic experience where you just deploy from a branch. Now, if you are using the CDN approach, just one word of caution, you need to make sure that all your references are relative. As you can see, I'm doing a dot forward slash for my CSS file, for my JavaScript file, 
Um, basically anything I'm referencing here, um, I've noticed that you can get away with more when you're developing locally, but then if you have the wrong URL format, when you push to GitHub pages, you're gonna run into some errors. So really it's better to just always use a build system. That way your code is, is minified and obfuscated as well. It just makes the process a lot cleaner and you have more control over what's happening. And there you have it. We have successfully uploaded our 3.js project to GitHub pages. Now, if you're brand new to 3.js and you wanna maybe learn some of the basics and have a better understanding of the fundamentals, I've put together a free crash course where you build your own 3D art gallery or project gallery. This is a really great starting point if you're trying to maybe build out a portfolio and you wanna incorporate some 3.js elements into it. Now, if you're feeling a bit more saucy, I do have a more advanced set of tutorials where you can learn how to build a fully functional Minecraft clone with destructive terrain and collision detection and all that, building that right in the browser with 3.js. So I'll put a link to both the crash course and the Minecraft tutorial playlist in the description below. So I hope you found this video helpful and it allowed you to get your project uploaded to GitHub pages. If you wanna see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And until next time, take care everyone. Thanks for watching.